It's Christmas in March. We got a new toy from the NSA, a new reverse engineering tool, and we'll show you. Hey Jim, uh, I understand there's a new uh, kind of reverse compiler disassembler that's available. Um, it's free, right? Yeah, uh, at RSA a week, two weeks ago, whenever it was, uh, the NSA released a tool that they had been talking about for a few months, which I've been calling Hydra, but apparently I look at their GitHub and it's actually Ghidra. And I've been playing around with it a little bit in in the last week or so, and thought I'd show you guys a little bit yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm kind of interested uh, to see uh, how it works. So I, I took a couple of the samples that we use in the uh, SANS class, the reverse engineering class when I teach it, mm -hmm. and I threw them in here. So yeah, so you, you open up a new project, you throw in whatever binaries you want to look at, and then you know, to, to run it, you just double click on it, would you like it to, an to analyze it? It gives you some choices, and the defaults seem to be fine. I haven't actually played with any of the, the non-defaults here. Mm -hmm. And now you've got basically all of the tools that you'd expect to have in a reversing, you know, something like IDA. Right. Uh, you know, this hasn't replaced IDA for me yet. Uh, there are a few things that IDA has that it, this doesn't have. But you know you can do all of the basic things. You know you can come over here and look at the imports, mm -hmm. and you can see this is obviously doing some registry stuff. And one of the nice things you'll see over here in the, this pane on the right-hand side is it tries to decompile it. Oh, I was just noticing that. So that was my question because I know with Ida Pro we use hex rays a lot. Right, to do the and, and, and I love their decompiler. Well, these guys have a decompiler built in as well. Decompiling is hard. As the program gets compiled and optimized, a lot of the context is lost, so going back the other direction is really hard. And they seem to be doing a pretty good job of it. So it looks like it's gonna be a really nice tool, um, especially for those who don't have a huge budget. Right. Right. Just, just with having a, not a whole lot of time to play with it, I'm liking it so far. Other than it, uh, it did seem slow on my Windows laptop when I first fired it up on there. Um, maybe I didn't have enough memory in that one. I've got more memory in this one, and it, it's been really peppy when I've been playing with it right. so far on the Mac. So, is this a good tool uh, if someone's just getting started in reversing to start using? Yeah, probably, um, given that I've only worked with it for a week. Right. But it, it, it has all of, it, or at least a lot of the capabilities of, you know, of some of the other tools that the folks are using out there today. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Well, the fact that they have the decompiler in there. The built-in decompiler is huge. That's a huge feature, because most of, the, of these other free ones don't have that in there. Yeah. And, and I they, need that. I and, can't. <laughs> I'd rather read C <laughs> than assembly. Yeah, well, and, really. and, and, and most of the time when I have this ability, I'll, I'll do a quick look here. If, if they weren't able to do any decent decompilation, then I'll look at, you know, more closely at the assembly language, because you're right. Reading all of the assembly language instructions and trying to figure out what each one does is not very efficient. Right, it's a little hard, unless you do it all the time, it, it get, it's a little right. hard to follow. Right. Uh, I think that for any beginner, that, I think that's a really good feature to have because it's you know, much easier to read what's happening in the, in the decompiler. All right, so I, very I, cool. I, I think it's got some real possibilities, and again, it's free. Uh, NSA has promised they're gonna open source it, although the source is not yet on their GitHub page, but they're promising that that's coming soon, so. If, and so far, we don't see any like little weird beacons come out of it. Back to the NSA, right? I I have not. <laughs> uh, back to HQ. And when the, when the source comes out, I know that there will be lots of people looking for it. Know. Right. <laughs> so, I, I don't expect that they'll be there because there will be lots of folks looking. Right. For uh, it. Yeah. But, everyone would be probably 
paranoid conspiracy theory think that you know you would suspect something like that. But let me, let me put my tin I'm sure hat on. Yeah, they're <laughs> smart enough not to try to do something. And like and, and one of the nice things is, I was talking to Manish earlier about this. One of the nice things is, you know, they've got a whole lot of people there. If they really decide to share some of their work, you know, plugins and and that kind of stuff. Uh, this could turn out to be a really nice tool. All right, very cool. Thanks for uh, bringing this uh, onto the show today. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Yeah, it's great having Jim here this week um, in person. I mean, we can do a lot remotely with video conferencing and that kind of stuff. But there's something about being able to just sit in a room and just throw ideas back and forth and hear what they're working on. So it's always good to get out here. That's why I try to do it once or twice a year.